Penny. Hi, Rach. Hello. How are you guys? Good. How about you? I am good. I'm a little summer, but I'm good. <laughs> Hi, Casey. Hi, Susan. Hi, Chris. How are you? Hi, Danielle. Mama. Hi. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Kisa. Hi, Amy. Hello. Hi, Kari. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kathy. Hi. There we go. Hi. <laughs> Where is everybody? How did we just have more people on <laughs> the other call? Okay, so I'm just gonna mute all of you guys. All right, well, we, um, I'm so excited to be on here with you guys. I like legit look forward to seeing this and, or seeing you guys and I miss you. Like uh, when I don't, this is like so fun to be able to see everybody that we text and Facebook message all day long with, you know? And I was, you know, of course, we all have fun on Memorial Day, but I'm always like, oh, like I miss it when it doesn't happen. So it feels like a while since I've seen some of you guys. Um, I've got just a couple announcements, and then I'm going to just get into the kind of grit of our team call. But what I would love, um, first of all, is for every single person in the chat who's on here right now, um, I want you to do two things. I want you to message someone in your team, upline, downline, crossline, whatever line, and just be like, get your butt on the team call, okay? And the second thing that I would love for you to do in our chat is just try something you're grateful for right now. Like just anything, anything that we as a community, we as a team, as a culture can raise the vibration to the world. I mean, in every way possible right now, people are suffering. We are seeing people hurting in a way that we never have experienced it. And I was on the phone with Lori Lori for like an hour this morning, just catching up. And it's like, what can we do? And it was like brainstorming of like, you know, Facebook post is not going to cut it. And how do you keep yourself safe and want to make a difference? And I just really want to go into this call with a focus of gratitude. You know what I mean? That this is a, um, just something that's really important to us as a company. So if you guys could just type in the chat, anything you're grateful for, um, I would love it. I would love to see that. Um, Christopher is saying he's grateful for positivity of this amazing group of people. Me too. Amber, um, I love that about your doctor. Um, you know, whatever this is, and please at the same time that you're pinging someone to get on the call to fill it with the gratitude. Um, for the announcements, there's not a whole lot. You guys, there's not major things to um, talk about right now, but um, the greens, just because of a little bit of a delay, they're are going to be in sticks if they're in people's auto ship or wholesale orders just you didn't see that they're still coming it's not back ordered just the canisters were so it might be coming in um the sticks and then for those of you that haven't blocked off the dates of celebration um it's friday night the 17th and saturday the 18th so it's free it's live this is normally our big convention but because of covid it's all going to be virtual and the afternoon and evening is gonna mimic general session, um, Saturday morning the same, and then Saturday night, they are trying to do a gala type award ceremony and encouraging people to dress up. Should you wanna to get together and do watch party events based on how you're feeling in July, what is allowed in your county or whatnot, you might wanna consider that, but just make sure you block off the date. All the new products are coming out, the new app is coming out. There's um, some really great incentives that are gonna be for people that are on. So just wanna make sure ahead of time that you guys know about that. And the last two like babysitting housekeeping items that I just wanna make sure I address before I get into our call. We have two threads that have a lot of people in them that are not participating. And my focus is to run with people that are hungry for this. We do a lot of training in this. We do a lot of training in our you know, team pages that provide support, that support, that um, help people. But those threads are really for those that are running, those that are really wanting um, to make a difference. And so the boosting my post threads, like we kind of like, Laura and I go in there, it's like, hello. But if you're not posting, like, why are you in there? Like I go in there, I'm like some people haven't even posted in two or three weeks. 
And if you're posting, they like, take the time to comment and like on people's, but there's some people that don't do anything and all of a sudden they'll put a post in and do the last one. The idea of that is consistency. So if you're not posting on social media and you're not supporting your team, just know we're removing you or take yourself out. So we'd rather work with five people really helping each other than 20 and they're not doing anything. And along those lines is the leader in action form. So this is, if you're tracking it, um, you guys can print it off. Um, we have it. And if you're not in the thread and you want to be, we'll add you. But if you're not sending it, like, I don't want to babysit anybody. Laura doesn't want to babysit anybody. We just really are using it for accountability for people who don't want zeros on there. Like they're really hungry for the Fiji trip and to grow their business. So if you're not sending it, right, and your team's not kind of doing it, like, let's just be done with it. And let those people that are running those hot molecules really stick with hot molecules because like one slow person can really affect the momentum of people that are hungry for it. So we all go with this business at different times in different seasons and that's okay. It's totally okay. But we really just want those to be focused on those that are kind of raising their hand and hungry for it right now. So that being said, um, thank you guys all for being on. Thank you for those of you that can have your videos on. I wanted to talk to you just about a few things that I think are so important always with this business. And then I wanted to go through um, Eric Worre's seven steps and talk to you a little bit about that book. But when I was thinking of my own, like if someone said like, what are four things? What are three things? What are five things that I would say could be really successful? And the reason that this came up, I'll be very transparent with you. There's a woman coming to me from another company and she's been following me and she wants to join our team. She watches these recordings. And she said, I, I, can I ask you a few questions? And it was like, what made Isogenics different? You know, the products, the compensation plan, those types of things. And she said, what would you say are what keep people um, not moving? Like the people that like are coming excited and totally flop, what are they doing wrong? And what would you say are the few things that people need to do if they want to hit the ground running? And her asking me that question is really what kind of got the wheels turning that led to the topic of tonight's call. And so I want to share with you just a few things that I think are so important for me. And then I'm going to lead into Eric Worre's. But my four, you know, is having a vision, knowing your why, having a daily method of operations, and being consistent. So my tips for you guys, or if someone was like, how do I become a successful network marketer? How do I leave my job? How do I replace my income? How do I pay off debt? How do I whatever? First of all, it's seeing where you're going. So for example, I have a friend who is paying over $13,000 a year in credit cards, okay? Some people have a lot less than that. Some people have a lot more. So it's $13,000. And the balances we basically figured out, it will cost her over six years to pay that off. So now you guys can do the math of 13000 times six years. It's a lot of money. And I said, what else would you do with that money? Like if you weren't paying debt, if you weren't just making a payment, right? And paying interest and all of these things that are not serving you, what would you do with it? And her wheels just started brainstorming, right? Anywhere from things she wants to remodel on her house to the car that she wants to upgrade to things she wants to do for her kids to a trip that she's never been on. So suddenly we had vision, right? I mean, she, she told me all of this. I don't know what she wanted to do with it. I just was kind of reverse engineering it. And then I asked her, okay, what are your ways to bring in extra income a week or a month right now? Like you're already so busy, you're a busy mom, you know, you are working a full-time job. Like what are your other ways? And she didn't, she didn't really have more time to give. She doesn't want to have another job. And so she had just kind of settled for that's the way it was going to be. So suddenly we had her why, right? Now she had this burning desire I want to be able to give more to my kids. I want to be able to do more. There was something inside of her that said, okay, I can get up earlier. I can stay up later. There was reason behind it. And part of you guys' journey and working with other people is helping them see where they're going and why they want to do it and understanding that this is evolving. So when I first started Isogenics, you know, Jenny painted this amazing vision for me. I couldn't even see it, but she spoke it into me every single day. She's like, I can't wait until you're not commuting into work every day. Like, I can't wait for us to be able to go to, you know, yoga and a spa day and get paid to be there. And I, can't, and I was like, this lady's crazy, you know, but whatever you start to believe, you will find, you know, you focus on, you find. 
And she would get to my why. She was like, oh, she was like, send me a picture of your paycheck from those doctors. She's like, oh, they, they, you know, they take advantage of it. I can't believe they would pay you that hourly rate. You know, you're made for more. Like you, and she would get me so fired up that I was like, okay, I'm not watching football and I'm calling 20 people because I don't want to work for $12 and 50 cents an hour. Like she got to my core. And so when you're asking yourself, like, where are you going? There are people here that are taking it to the top. They will be isogenics millionaires. They're going to train on stage. They've already trained on stage. You know, they're going to be authors. They're going to be speakers. They're going to open up nonprofits, right? There are a lot of people that are doing that. And then that's not everybody, right? Some people want to be able to pay cash for a trip for a big birthday. Some people want to be able to buy a second home. Some people just want to pay off their student loan debt. Like whatever that is, you have to see it. You know, you have to see that credit card paid in full. You have to see your family on that vacation and kind of know why you're doing it. So the other two things that are very important to me in terms of helping someone be successful your daily method of operations. You know, those are your income producing activities. These are your habits. If you get up every single day and it's like, uh, I don't know what to do today. Like, uh, what do I say? What do I do? Should I post? Should I read? Should I work out? Should I comment on all of our pages and the groups, right? If you're like totally lost and you're like a sailor in a big ship in the ocean with no map, that's what's going to show up in your business. And everybody's daily method of operations is totally different. And that's okay, that's what makes this fun. So like, I am so creative in the morning, I am bright and chipper, I'm energetic, I can do more between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. than like the majority of the day. Not everybody functions around that time. Some people are like totally, you know, cocoon still, and they need to wait till two o'clock in the afternoon to step into their creative zone. But it's what are your habits? So like for me, my daily method of operations, when I get up in the morning, I do gratitude. Like I have to get my head place right. I don't even work out until I've raised my own energy. You know, I set my intentions for the day. Who are the people I wanna serve? Who are the people that I want to attract? I work out, you know, first thing in the morning. These are daily things that I do, they're habits. Like if I'm on vacation or I'm here, I do those types of things. And then I track how many people am I reaching out to? How many people am I following up to? Of my new enrollments, how many people am I, you know, focus on rank advancing? What am I doing for recognition? What am I doing for team culture? What am I doing for adding value in the pages? Like I track this and we have given you guys so many resources, but I don't want you to feel like there's one way, but I want you to think of a system, okay? Of what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis that makes you a professional? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis that will lead you to be incredibly successful? And tied in with that is consistency. You know, if someone has a great workout plan, but they only go twice a month, like you're not gonna get the same results as the same person that goes 20 times a month. It doesn't have to be every single day, but it has to be consistent. You know, if you put a power post up and then three weeks go by and you don't post about isogenics and all of a sudden another one comes up, people don't trust you. You know, they have to see what you're doing consistently. You're building a relationship with people. If you're talking about the products, following up with them, going to events, hosting events, if you do a sip and sample and people can't come, you should have another one already lined up to invite people to virtually or in person. If you don't and you wait a year and you're like, oh, it's been a while since I did that thing, it just doesn't work. Okay. And so the last little line I'll leave you with before I go into Eric Worries, um, because I really wanted to bring something that I think that I've seen work really well or not work so well is remembering that people truly, truly overestimate what they're gonna do in the first year and they underestimate what's possible in you know five to 10 years. And if you think about corporate America and you're gonna climb that ladder, an entry level position does not make the same amount of money as a VP, as a director, as a manager, as a senior level employee, and you have to take time to get there. And so with network marketing, who cares if you don't make $10,000 a month your first year, you're making $100 a month. It's more than you were doing before this, but then you have to see about what's possible with that consistency, right? In years and months to come. And so I just um, really want you guys to kind of have that and leave that of like what is happening right now. You're planting seeds for the fruit of what will come in years and months down the road. So Eric Worre, He's the author of GoPro. Um, many of you have gone to his GoPro event. If you have never listened to the book or you haven't listened to it in a while, I cannot encourage you to download it from Amazon. You can listen to it in a couple hours. It's incredible. And this truly was a game changer for me in treating this business differently, not only because he was the first person to really ingrain in me, this is a skills-based business. 
And just like a dental hygienist has to go to school and she has to be an intern and a nutritionist has to do these things and a psychologist and a lawyer and a CPA, that this is a business and this is a profession and it's not a hobby. For those of us that are really taking this seriously, it's not a hobby, right? Like we want this to be our full time or a very lucrative supplemental side hustle. That's why you're on this call, right? We have what, 2000 people in the Dreamers in Action page and there's 25 on here. I mean, you guys are the ones saying you want something different with it. And so listen to this book because not only will it give you some of the skills, but it's that big picture. So you are a network marketing professional. And just like any sales job, people have to learn to get better. Just like any medical profession, they have to start somewhere and they have to get better. So Eric Worre says that there's seven skills basically. And these are the seven skills that you need to master to be a top income earner, to become a very successful network marketing. And I'll go through them individually and not to replace you guys reading the book or listening to the audio, but just to kind of give you some tips and some um, verbiage around it from someone who sucked at the beginning and has been so diligent in getting better in that commitment that I do feel confident in all of these areas, some better than others, but I do feel confident that I do them and can teach other people how to do them. So the first one is finding prospects. Like if you guys can even just type in the chat right now or raise your hand, like who feels like you struggle to find people to talk to? You know, you're like, okay, I message all my friends, all my family, like the girl at you know Starbucks is tired of me giving her a shake sample, like, you know, just finding people to talk to, okay? So, I mean, he's going to go into depth a lot into this book and a ton of different examples, but that's a skill. And so look at how many of you just related to that. I mean, it's literally like almost the whole call. That doesn't mean that you can't do this business. That doesn't mean you're going to suck at it or you're not going to make a lot of money. It means you have to get better at that. And so this was something I learned how to do. Like I love talking to people. I can always make friends, but how was I ever going to bring up isogenics? And so our um, Dash to Executive call, Zach Slobin, was just the guest speaker on there. And he was referencing to a story of when they were going for a goal. His wife, Eden, went into the Whole Foods uh, nutrition section to find like-minded people, to bring up a conversation. I'm sure she was looking at vitamins or protein shakes. He didn't say specifically, but I was like, that's brilliant, <laughs> you know? And that's what we're talking about. I mean, I've been doing this for almost seven years and I'm still learning. So when you are understanding that you are um, getting better at this, right? That's one skill is finding prospects. And I'm not gonna teach you how to do all of them, but I want you to, as we go through, like take a scale a measurement zero to 10 and rate yourself. You know, if I thought I was a three at finding prospects, maybe I'm a seven or eight right now. I'm not Jessica Rigno, I'm not a 10, right? I've gotten better at it. But if you're like a three or four, you're like, okay, this is something I need to get better at. And so when you're thinking about finding prospects, if that's online, if that's offline, if that's with your friends, if that's with your family, if that's out in the community, however that is, just know that that's something that always has to bring new blood into your team. There always has to be new people into the pipeline. You cannot rely that the people that got started with you in 2015 are the people who are still running with you today. It doesn't always work that way. So the second um, skill is inviting um, and being able to invite people to an event, being able to invite people to a look at a video, being able to invite people to get on an opportunity call, being able to invite people to a three-way call. It is not just finding those prospects, but then getting the verbiage down that they actually show up to what you want them to be a part of. So if I find this amazing prospect, right? Like I'm at Orange Theory and I see this girl who's influential and ripped and she's already using supplements. I'm like, oh my gosh, here's the next Lori Harder, right? If I don't know what to say to her, the prospect can be right in front of your face, but the second skill is learning how to invite, learning how to compliment someone, learning how to say, hey, I couldn't help but notice you, and I think you would be amazing at what I do. If I, I could send you a video, would you have a minute to watch it? You know, if I could invite you to this private Zoom call, would you be able to make time to hop on tonight? So your second skill, and like I said, I'm not going through all of these on how to get better at them. I'm teaching you the skills so that you know where you need to focus. So some of you might say, well, if I just had an unlimited amount of people in front of me, I could invite them all day long. I've got that part down. I don't know where to find people. Where some of you might be saying, well, I can find people left and right, but I don't know what to say to them. All right. I want you guys to just realize the skill set that it takes in understanding where you are and how to get better. So if I don't think about isogenics, if I don't think about network marketing for a second, Imagine if I was a personal trainer and I brought you into the gym to do an assessment, 
Like how many push-ups can you do? How many sit-ups can you do? How fast can you run a mile? Like we're looking at the base level of like, okay, this person has great cardiovascular skills. They have no strength, right? Or they're strong as heck. They have no flexibility. Like it's a general assessment. So these skills is not necessarily, I'm going to teach you all tonight, but I really want you to understand what it takes to do this business well. And Eric Roy is the best at doing this. So the third, third skill is presenting. So you found someone you invited them to your house. Now, how well do you present the information? So if you get up to the front of the room and you're like, oh, it's adaptogens and fasting and it's GMO. And then this one time and I lost all this weight, but my pants are too big, but then they were like so small and my friend did it and she made all this money, but I don't know if that's compliant, right? If like that's her presentation, it's a skill. If you get better at being able to be concise and being succinct and being enthusiastic, how likely are people going to be to join you, to partner with you? Now, at Celebration last year, some of you know Emily Babber, some of you don't, she's a top 10 income earner in the company. She showed a video that she used a decade ago when she was like very first learning. Today, she is so polished, she's so poised, she's an international keynote speaker. In this decade, she has mastered this skill of presenting. Imagine if she was like, I suck. I'm the worst speaker ever. I can never be at the front of the room. I'm done. I quit. You know, she's making nearly $2 million a year right now with Isogenics. But that's because she got committed to learning the skill of presenting, presenting virtually, presenting on a three-way call, presenting how you show up in a room, presenting at a launch party, presenting on stage, whatever that may be, and being able to get your message across. So if you're feeling like, okay, I can find prospects, I'm good at inviting them to something, and then I suck well, as soon as I get on the Zoom call, that's okay. It's okay to suck, right? We all sucked at first. We fell forward. It's highlighting, I need to get better at this. There's a lot of you actually that are probably incredible at presenting. You're like, oh, I can use those slides. I know my 30 second story. I can do the whole thing, but you're not able to get people to your house. Like you're all ready to go, but your sip and sample is like showing up like a secret party. So your effort right now is not going to be working on presenting. Your skill set is going to be working on inviting. Is this making sense a little bit? Okay, so the fourth skill is follow-up. This is where 99% of people, that's my average, that's not a statistic anywhere, like for real, is I feel like I'm a salesperson. I feel like I'm pushing someone. I feel like I'm bugging them. So let's talk sales for a second. Statistically, most people, most people will quit following up with a lead before the fourth touch, okay? Most people will quit by the second or third. 85% or more. But the majority of people that say yes, that join, that get started, like more than 85%, it's after the sixth to eighth touch. So it's so funny, I have a brand new girl right now who is like, oh my gosh, no one wants to do this with me because she put one post up, reached out to some people and they didn't enroll. And I was like, you realize you and I have been talking for two years. You know, and I was like, and she's like, uh, and I'm like, you should probably read our Facebook chat because I have invited you to many things and this and that. And when you were finally ready and she's like, oh, and I'm like, don't hold people to a standard that you didn't even do. Like you didn't pick up the phone one day and just get started. And we kind of have to remind ourselves of that because a lot of us didn't get started right away. Or we had to look over information or talk to a husband or, you know, quit our other products we were already using or something. And yes, there were some people that were like, okay, I'm ready. I'm in. And that's awesome. Most people are not. So learning the skill of building that relationship and being able to follow up without scaring people away, you know, it's not like a ping pong ball of like isogenics, 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 it's a skill. And I will tell you in the very beginning, I was bad at it. This is where I probably got unfriended the most. If I were to be totally honest and I look back, because I would prospect someone like Amber, you know, I was like, hey, do you want to come to my thing? She was like, oh, I'm busy. And then I would really not have a conversation with her. I was like, hey, do you remember me? I was your, you were my Uber driver. And I was like, I'm having this event. She was like, I'm driving. And I was like, hey, we have a discount. We have free shipping this week. She was like, I'm not interested, right? And I never got to know her. I never really built a relationship with her. There was no trust. And she was like, man, this bitch just wants to sell me something, right? Like that's how that would have gone. And now, seven years later, you know, like if I met her and she's like, oh, I'm busy, but let me know about the next one. I would know to build a relationship with her, ask questions about how she's doing during this time, maybe be able to send her a sample, you know, if it wasn't during this pandemic of like, do you work out? Like a bunch of my girlfriends and I are going to go to a cycle park class. I would love for you to be able to join us, you know, and 
building that relationship so that then when there's a seasonal shake release, I could be like, hey, do you remember a couple months ago and I talked to you about this amazing wellness company? We just had this delicious seasonal shake release and I'm telling everybody I know. And I just want to circle back to see if right now is maybe a better time to talk to you about the products I love so much. How much more open do you think she's going to be? How do we build this relationship? And I genuinely care about her, but she still sees my passion and my consistency, my enthusiasm. Okay. So that's a skill. That's the fourth one. So again, so far it is finding people, then it's inviting, then it's presenting, then your follow-up. So some of you are saying, oh, I can find people all day long, right? I'm searching hashtags on Instagram. I'm this and that, but you don't follow up with them. If it's only one touch, and you lose them, guess what? The second or third touch that is going to come from someone else, they're going to join Exogenics. You're going to see it because you were the first touch. You tap the seed, but if someone else is the second or the third or the fourth, they're going to go with that person, right? And they're like, oh yeah, my other friend reached out to me. So you really want to be on touch of that. You guys are smiling because it's happened to you or you know someone it's happened to, myself included. Okay, so that's the fourth skill is to follow up. Um, the fifth one, and now we're switching here a little bit from not just bringing on customers, but being able to develop your people is to help your prospects become um, consultants or distributors. In other words, this is getting your people paid. So we have a lot of customers, right? We have a lot of people who are using our wellness products. How do you get them excited about the business? How do you do a vision casting call? How do you start attracting people? who want to join for the business, not a cleanse, not a reset, right? They're wanting to be a business partner of yours. They wanna be a network marketing professional. This is a skill. In the very beginning of Isogenics, you guys, I enrolled over 100 people for a new year, new you cleanse, basically, when I started, right? With all these product users, they are all inactive right now, except my sister and my mom, I think. I mean, like a handful of people, all inactive. So I didn't know what I was doing, right? It was like, here's your shakes, here's your cleanse, here's our Facebook group, like, good job. Auto ship was automatic. Like, you know, I didn't take care of them. Forget talking to them about you share, they share, and showing other people how to do this business or being able to cast that vision. And today, you know, when someone reaches out to me about the products and I'm, I'm literally showing you what this looks like. A lot of people come for the business because I'm bold about it and I started for the business. But even when people come for the products, this just happened to me. She's gonna be my newest consultant later on tonight. She is an esthetician, right? She was um, just wanting the reset, blah, blah, blah. And this is the skill set. So I said, hey, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? Are you busy? And she's like, no, I'm fine. And I asked her how her business was affected, right, during the pandemic. I said, were you able to make money? Did you have another source of income? Like this and that. And I said, you know, right now I'm finding so many other entrepreneurs, so many people in the health and beauty industry really looking for supplemental income. I know you want to drop some quarantine pounds, but I have an obligation to show you this business. It has helped hundreds of thousands of people I know make anywhere from $500 to $5,000 a month. Would you be open to learning more? She didn't even know there was a business to it. She was like, are you serious? And she was like, you know people that are doing that? And I said, yes, I know a lot of people, starting with myself. So we immediately went right in to talking about the compensation plan and what she had to do. She was enrolling her husband and she enrolled a good friend, right? Another person who saw my post last night when I had the picture of Rachel and my mom, and I'm like, these are my two people. Who would you go to a movie with right now? Who are you going to go to the gym with? People wrote me about that. And we're like, can you really get paid from two people? And I said, yes, if you don't believe me, I can send you a quick video to watch it. And after you watch it, I'll set a time to walk you through it. I'm qualifying people. So this is a skill set. And if you're not there and you feel like everybody with a pulse and a heartbeat needs to join your business, they don't respect you and they're not going to do anything. When you have a standard for your time, right, when you show up with a skill set that this is your business and you are attracting in people who are committed, who are coachable, who have work ethic, the whole game changes. And I want you to guys to realize this, they don't have to be your personally enrolled. Like if I could celebrate some people on this team right now who we have attracted in, like Anna and Chris, they're four or five levels down in my organization, right? But they saw something and I saw something in them. That's when there's a match, you know, and they're coachable and they're doing the work. And so this back to the skill set number five, finding people who want to do the business, finding people that are going to be attracted to your post and learning how to develop them. So it's not just always, hey, I want you to find two accountability partners. That's great upfront cash. And we're hoping on the fact that if they get a little taste of their products, they're not going to go inactive or a little bit of bonus money, right? That like they're seeing that, that they're going to actually go and build 
but that's different than you spending the time and saying, you know what, there's this 15 minute interview. It's the new associate interview. I don't call it that, but it's like there's a 10 to 15 minute little questionnaire that I love to do with people to really get to know your goals. It helps me coach you on an individual basis. Can we set a time to do that? This is how I'm going to be the most committed to as a coach and you're going to get the best results. And in that interview, it asks questions about auto ship. It asks questions about going to events. It asks questions about, hey, when you have bomb ass results, are you going to refer people? Do you want to build a business or do you just want to give them to me? Like it does that for you. So it's a skill set. And I will tell you, I would have been shaking in my boots back in 2014 having to do that, but I did it. And today it's a total different conversation. And I'm excited about it. People are like, oh no, I'm good. I don't want to, I don't want to sell anything. I don't want to make any money. No problem. But people don't question what I'm doing and my passion around it. Not because I've made a lot of money with isogenics, but because I've mastered that skill. It's my verbiage. It's my confidence. It's my excitement. It's the language that I can use. So again, I'm not on here to tell you I'm a badass and you guys suck. I just want you to tell you I used to suck and I've gotten better because I listened to a lot of podcasts. I listened to a lot of trainings. I've had a lot of conversations. I've been to a lot of events and just like my first spin class sucked. Why anyone came back? I'm not sure. It was terrible. I remember it. Right. And then for the last, last few years, all of my spin classes are totally full. This is a skills based business. So if you feel like you suck right now at creating consultants, don't quit. You will get better. It will all get better. So number six, helping your distributor get started. This is telling them what to do, right? Having a system for that. So many people get people started and then just like throw them to the wolves. They don't even know what to tell them. So if you were to ask me, what are the first two, three, four things I would tell a business builder to do? I bet you guys could guess because I've told many of you to do it, right? Actually, I want to challenge you because like Amy is someone brand new um, that I would have like had that conversation with um, Beth, maybe. Like, I'm just curious if you guys even like type the same thing. But like, if someone asked me, like another team, they said, Lauren, what are the three or four things you do with a brand new business builder? Like, I can tell you, right? Laura could tell you. If, if someone messaged Laura right now, and I know she's been dealing with some family stuff, so she's kind of in and out of her call, but you know, she could tell you, this is what I do. But if you're someone right now who's brand new and super excited, I'm just going to pick on Anna because I love her, right? And she's so hungry for this, but she's new. I was like, oh my gosh, this person just came to me from another company and they want to build the business. What do I do? She doesn't know. She's never really had to bring on a distributor and a business builder. So this is a skill. So for me, when I think about what I do with someone, how do I bring on a distributor? It's things like go to Ice the Movie and watch the videos, listen to GoPro, make a list of people, right? Like print out the master crystal executive. Like these are things I tell every single person. If you don't have a list of people to talk to, we don't have anyone, we don't have a starting point. I can't even give you a script of what to say if you don't have a list of people, you know? Understanding a little bit of our product, understanding a little bit of the compensation plan, so I know that, you know, like Laura would have a similar thing too, of like teaching ATMs. She always talks to them about making a list. She educates them on social media and how to get it offline. Like that doesn't mean that my system is any better than Laura's or vice versa. It's just the fact that we have one. We know what to do with someone when they're super excited and they want to build. So part of you going from a happy product user, a side hustle to a network marketing professional and making significant money with this is mastering that skill. So I'm encouraging you guys, don't forget on a scale of one to 10, where are you? If you just went, oh shit, I've never thought about what I would do with a new builder, you're a zero or one and that's okay. You know, if you're someone like Kisa and you're a six figure income earner on the team, she probably has a different onboarding system than me, but she has something. She might be a seven or eight. We always have room to grow and get better. But be realistic so you kind of know what to focus on and what to do with that. And then the number seven, the last one is promoting events. I mean, this is the number one income producing activity you can do in your business, typically when we have events. So even though celebration is going to be virtual, it's going to be amazing. All right. It's going to be amazing. It is some of the best lineups in the industry, not even in just isogenics. But on average, every person you get to an event will increase your revenue by $1,000 that upcoming year. So if we bring 10 people to celebration, you're going to increase your business by 10 grand that next year. If you bring 100 people, you're going to increase your business by 100,000. They are corporate trained. They learn the skill set. They have the buy-in. They see the belief. They see the culture. But being able to promote that, it's huge. You know, and I will tell you, 
like watching people like Laura, you know, her very first event, she came with one person, right? She was excited. She didn't know why she was coming. But over the years, she had 20, 30 people in her organization there because it's a skill. She got better at it, being able to explain the value. So even now with celebration, people are like, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, they're like, oh, I have to sit on my computer like all day long. Like, I'm good. Is it recorded? I'll watch it later, right? Like how many of you are getting that? And if you're like, okay, you're right, it's going to be really hot in July, if you probably don't want to watch TV all day, I'll take notes for you, your business is not going to grow, right? There's a lot of businesses that have non-negotiable meetings, staff meetings in July that people are going to show up for. When you take that posture and you say, you know what, that's fine, but I'm really only uh, committed to working with people that are committed. And if you're not really getting on the, the call and the training, that's fine. You're just not that serious about that. And I'm going to focus on people that are. When you take that posture, people are going to show up because people that show up, go up. If you talk the posture of like, you know what, I can't teach you in two years what they're going to teach you in two days. And you're the CEO of your business. You have to decide how badly you want this. Are you willing to invest a day and a half of your time to create a decade of freedom and fulfillment that you strive for? What sacrifices are you willing to make for the gains you want to have in your life, right? When you create a posture and you create a standard, like this is not a non-negotiable. This is our flagship event. We all go. People are going to follow that and they're going to do what you do. So if you're telling people to get on and you don't get on, well, then you're just a phony. It doesn't work that way, right? But as you're promoting it and you're committed to it, and you're creating excitement around it and doing contests and things like that, you're going to see people that are committed. I mean, Jenny, it was a non-negotiable that I was going to my ICU. When I first started, I went by myself. Like, it was not an option. Like, if I wanted Jenny to work with me, I had to go. And I was like, why is this lady making me go to Kansas City, you know? I didn't get it. But the minute I was there and I saw the, the belief and the culture and the compensation plan and all these leaders, I was like, gosh, no wonder why she wanted me to be here. Sometimes people don't know, but it's our conviction and our posture that they will borrow in understanding that until they get themselves. So just in summary, these seven steps and go back again and rate yourself, you know, on a scale of one to 10, where you're at and where you need to improve. Finding prospects is number one. Number two is inviting. So inviting to a three-way call, inviting to our preview page, inviting to an online opportunity meeting, whatever that is. How are you inviting them to something? Number three is presenting. Once you get them there, what are you saying? How are you saying it? Number four, your follow-up. Number five is being able to bring in business builders, how to convert product users to business builders, attracting in business builders. Number six is onboarding those distributors, right? Like, what are you doing for them? If someone's all excited and is like, okay, I want to go executive, what do I do? Do you have a roadmap for them? Do you have a system that's duplicative so that when their builder comes on, they know what to do with that person? And number seven, being able to promote events, whether those are sip and samples, those are, you know, our virtual opportunity meetings, those are our company's flagship core events, just being able to promote events. So we're going to wrap up a little bit early um, tonight, but I want to just leave you guys with um, a couple thoughts. Typically, typically, and I don't even like to say this stuff out loud, but I'm such a realist, I'm just going to tell you. Typically, we right now would be going into our slow months. So Isogenics is really, really busy, you know, January to spring. You know, we're really, really busy fall to the holidays. Typically right now, people are going on vacation, they're out of their habits, you know, school's out, and they just kind of check out and then they resume again in September. I'm going to encourage you to really adapt a different mindset. I have the company record, or I did for a while, like the number um, of enrollments in the month of December, the highest enrollments. And that was the first year I joined Isogenics. December is the slowest month in Isogenics history. And people always said, how did you do it? And I said, well, first of all, no one told me it was a slow month. Like no one ever said like, hey, no one's gonna enroll with you in December. I was just excited and I did it. And it was after the fact, I learned that December was a slow month. So if I didn't tell you right now, hey, summer's kind of slow, like you wouldn't even have that idea in your head. But outside of that, we're in a different season. So from a product standpoint, I heard the other day on the leadership call, and then I heard it on the radio as well, the weight gain that people have had in quarantine is like the same type of weight that people have gained over the holidays. So if you had someone who joined with you in January and they spent all this time trying to reach their goal, they're saying seven to 15 pounds. So you can bank for most people, it's 10 pounds. 
through quarantine if they have not been on the system, right? And they haven't been cleansing and working out or whatnot. So there's a reason that people want these products. They're coming out of quarantine. It's summer. They don't feel good about their body. They've got extra chub rub or whatever is happening, okay? That we really can offer solutions that I cannot encourage you enough to be bold about the products. Like be bold posting about them, sharing recipes, tagging your friends, reaching out to them. Use our products creatively for summer recipes. They will attract people that are excited about how to have something refreshing and healthy. So some of the things that I recently have seen that are going really well is like the hydrate popsicles, you know, and um, finding a cute picture and recipe for that, showing how the shakes can be like ice cream, like make a shake that is so thick, you have to use a spoon for it and posting about it. I did it in our own page because I legit was so impressed that I got Ryan's belly buster that thick. I can't even tell you how many people in our own team were like, what did you do? How did you get it so thick? You know, like these aren't even prospects, but you know, doing things that are going to get people really excited and just remembering the, the time that we're in right now. And I'm not talking about the racial stuff. I'm talking still just with the wellness and the, the economy. There is a global awareness for wellness. Like that's not a US thing, that's not a Europe thing, that's not a down under thing. That is like people want to armor themselves and they're understanding how important it is to put the right nourishment in. Like we have got to do a great job of educating our friends, our family, our prospects that this is not a weight loss company. Yes, we have a weight loss solution, but we're a wellness company in letting people see that we can alkalize the body, that we detox the body, that we, you know, can boost your immunity with the protein shakes, that the vitamins are nutritional insurance. I mean, really leading with a lot of the wellness products and not just weight loss. Like we don't want people to think like, oh, I didn't lose weight. I should send it all back. Or so focus on the weight loss that they're missing out, that they're sleeping better, that their energy is better, that their digestive tract is better, and all the other things that Isogenics does. So I can't encourage you enough to kind of be bold about that. The other is this opportunity is growing. Network marketing is growing because people want to have multiple streams of revenue. They were hit so hard. They see the importance of that. And they don't want to go back to work or they don't have an office necessarily to go back to. I mean, there's still job cuts. The economy is struggling. And I was in my friend's restaurant on Friday. You guys, this broke my heart. He's a dear friend of mine. It was dead. We were the only people in there at noon on a Friday afternoon. He said we were the sixth table in two and a half days. Like they're not going to make it at that rate, right? They're just not. And it's like, what else are these people going to do? I mean, we couldn't tip enough and order enough to try and be able to help them. And we did the best that we could. But the point is people are going to be looking for other things. You know, I mean, the corporate America to the service industry, to the beauty industry, there are people that are looking for something. And I encourage you to be a student of these skills and commit to getting better at all of them so that you can really not only impact a ton of lives, but design yours the way that you want it to look. So if you check out this summer, you're going to miss a lot of people. You're going to miss a huge wave. And so back to the very beginning, when I was telling you, like, you have to know why you do something and you have to have vision and what are your daily method of operations and being consistent. I will be totally transparent with you guys. I am in a place right now that I don't work a lot of hours. And I have a multiple six-figure income because of Isogenics, right? I'm paid more than a full-time income. And I don't put in 20, 30, 40 hour weeks all the time, right? I would, I mean, I don't have to because it's duplicating. But I will tell you the things that I do daily, that DMO, the consistency, I post on social media every day, every day. My lights are so on about I use these products. I believe in the transformation. I believe in the opportunity. And I try to show people the crazy stuff I do for fun or what my life is so that they trust me. Like why people want to see Ryan and I eat a caprese salad, I'm not sure. But suddenly when I post a transformation, they're like, okay, she's like a real person. You know, I eat cheese. I'm not sure. But the, I, I do it every single day. When we were in Grand Cayman, we posted. In Mexico, we posted. My honeymoon, I will post, right? Like that is something I do every day. It is a non-negotiable to me to not do personal development. I listen to a, a podcast every single day, every single day, a minimum of one, usually when I'm showering and getting ready or cooking dinner, right? It's why I'm doing another activity, but I'm constantly growing. I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly, you know, improving the verbiage and skill set around that. 
and I read a book a month. Like that's a goal of mine. So some days I can sit down and read 20 and 50 pages. Some days I read five, but there are always books in front of here. There's books in my bag, books by my bed, you know, that I'm always just sitting down and saying, how can I get better? These are my daily method of operations. These are the habits, the consistency that has led to, I don't have to put in a lot of time and there's more money here um, that I'm trying to share with you. Okay. And in addition to the social media, in addition to the personal development, I reach out to new people every day. And I follow up with people every day. So when I tell you, like, we play and we have a lot of fun, like on Sunday, we went to the driving range and then we went and looked at wedding rings and we went to a friend's house and had drinks on the patio. But I knew that stuff was happening. So I got up an hour and a half earlier than Ryan so I could do my non negotiables, right? Like, I did that. He's like, you're going to set the alarm on Sunday. I was like, yeah, look how jam packed you put the day in, you know, to get all that stuff going. But then I also like Sunday nights, like that's when this business happens. If you're not paying attention to your team and obsessed with getting them paid, like who's close to their second cycle, who's close to their double pivs, you're missing out because getting those people paid is what's going to lead to the growth and the commitment. So from five o'clock to 10 o'clock on Sunday nights, I'm like, forget about me doing anything else, right? Like if I'm not having fun at brunch, like I cut myself off. I'm like, I got to be on my game here in a little bit. I don't ever have to worry about setting an alarm on Monday morning. I don't ever have to worry about commuting. I don't have to worry about some a-hole boss's deadline like I used to, but I'm telling you the DMO that I put in place is what's done all that. And just like Zach Slobin said on our executive call for those that weren't on, he said 80% of the fuel for a rocket ship is required at takeoff. That's the same with the business and I believe in that. Right now, if you're gonna go slow in the season of the summer, that's okay. But in 2021, your business is gonna look a lot like it does right now. But if you can get committed to mastering these seven skills, create a daily method of operations and be consistent and just say, you know what, I, every single day I'm going to get a little better. Every single day I'm going to do a little personal development. Every single day I can commit to reaching out to one new person, following up with one new person. Even if you just did it five days a week, right? That's 10 conversations a week. That's 40 at the end of the month. Imagine what your business will look like. Imagine the people that you can help. And that's what I really want you guys to see. I don't spend a lot of time doing this because I've gotten better at it. But at the beginning, it took me more time because I sucked at it, you know? But I said, I will get better. I will get better at presenting. I mean, my three-way calls were long sometimes because I couldn't get to the point. But now, like you pre-qualify them, it's like, yes, no, what are your flavors? Let's go, right? Because there's a system in place and we've gotten better at it. So I wanna leave you guys just with the encouragement that no matter where you are in your business, there's four stars on this call and there's brand new associates who are excited about it. We all are at different parts of our journey. Don't ever compare yourself to anybody else, okay? Like your beginning is probably their middle. Run your own race, but go back to that. Why are you doing this? Where do you wanna go? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis and who are you bringing along with you? So you guys are awesome. Have an awesome night. Thank you for being on here. We'll see you next Monday. I'm doing our calls all through the summer. No break. Love you guys. Bye.